But first, by the end of the weekend, barring some sort of unforeseen event, and let's be honest here, there have been more than a few of them of late, Donald Trump will be essentially the Republican nominee on the ticket in November. Nikki Haley will hang around hoping to be the Bradbury candidate, but I certainly wouldn't count on it. Which means one thing, Donald Trump and his supporters now have to shift hard into general election mode. It's not enough to have the base on side, as important as that is. No, Donald Trump has got to go out and start getting ready to harvest that majority of electoral votes. And yes, the polls are on his side. According to the Real Clear Politics aggregate, Trump wins a general election by almost two points. He's also up in key battleground states like Georgia, Wisconsin, Arizona, Michigan, and Nevada. And slipping third-party candidates like RFK Jr. and Cornell West into the mix seems to cost Biden a lot more support than it does Trump. <laughs> Wonder if why that's why they're not giving RFK Secret Service protection despite his rep repeated pleas. Oh, but I digress. That's crazy talk. But looking ahead, I want to preview three big hurdles Trump is going to need to overcome to win. Hurdle number one, money. Donald Trump may be a rich guy, but we all know that big money in America has been pouring into the Democrats for at least three decades now. And it's not stopping now with the Biden campaign. The latest campaign finance filings should concern Trump. Joe Biden scooped up $42 million in donations in January. By contrast, Trump campaign brought in just $8.8 .8 million. The Trump campaign also ended the month with just around $30 million in the bank, in contrast to the Biden campaign, which closed out the month with $56 million. What's more, the number of Trump donors is falling, with 200,000 fewer donors this time around at this point in the election than the last time of the election cycle. Now, it's not panic stations, but it is something he needs to worry about, especially considering hurdle number two, legal threats. A little later in the program, I'll be joined by Robert Barnes to talk about Trump's legal struggles. But what we've learned this week shows just how far the left is going to go to take him down. Within the nearly half billion dollar judgment a New York judge handed down against Trump for the crime of, let me check here, oh, oh yes, taking out loans from banks and then paying them back in full, well, there's a provision that essentially forces the former and possible future president to stump up the entire fine before he can appeal. Really. Now, I don't care what you think of Trump, but this is partisan abuse of the justice system to bankrupt somebody for standing against the Democrat regime. And they're not going to stop there. The Fonnie Willis clown show in Georgia is continuing on charges of election interference. There's still the classified documents matter. <laughs> Hello, Joe Biden. And then there are the attempts to keep Trump off the ballot in as many as 30 states. Because, as you know, it's only preserving our democracy if people are forced to vote only one way. Finally, hurdle number three, woke social media. We all know how hard social media companies stepped on the scales in 2020 to skew the election. The suppression of the Hunter Biden laptop was just one element in a much larger dishonest campaign to, as they called it, secure the election and strengthen our democracy. Yeah, right. Now, this year, it's only going to get stronger. And the same forces that are trying to take Trump out with the legal system are also going to try hard to stifle social media and censor anything that they don't like by calling it misinformation. Now, why are they fighting so hard with every tool in their arsenal? Well, simply because Joe Biden is, to come back to where we started, weak. According to Gallup, he should lose the election. And probably the biggest reason that Joe Biden is looking shaky going into the election is that, well, he's looking shaky, period. I mean, just look at this from the other day when a member of the press asked him about his upcoming State of the Union address and winning re-election. Thank you so much. 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 Th
going to win re-election anyway. So there he was, confused, not knowing what's going on. And before the press has hustled out of the room, one of his boosters had to step in to get a rousing cheer while the president looked on, not knowing what was happening. Right now, it feels like America, like that clip shows exactly how America is divided into two halves. The half that knows there's something wrong with Biden and says so, and the half that knows there's something wrong but says don't believe your lying eyes. Everything's fine. And anyway, it's not like he's the guy really in charge. Trump and his supporters need to realize how big that group might turn out to be and how hard it could be to shake them out of their self-deception. 